for an illustration. Now, if you want to find Rule of Computer Academy, you can find it under NID. NID means National Innovation Diploma, and is being categorized under IEI, Innovation Enterprise Institution. Please listen very carefully. Try to understand what I'm explaining. The same method I applied here, that's what you're going to use for other institutions, for those people that installed the application on your phone, and those that will log in with through the website or go straight to iBuzz. Because currently, Jam, they are doing updates in their site. So even if you log in, you can have access to tell you they are doing maintenance. So when it's stable, like I think it will be stable when the phone will be on sale. So you check it and gather all the information you need. So please listen carefully. So I'm clicking on Innovation Enterprise Institution. When I click on it, it will give me institutions that are categorized under this. There are various institutions. Now I want to show you, see, you have a Bensi Daosa, Bini, they are still running IEI program, and we have so many institutions. This innovation, uh, NID, looks strange to many persons. They felt maybe, where did the role of computer academy come up with this uh, uh, NID? They have started again. So these are institutions under So now, this is Role of Computer Academy, Worry Delta State. So when you click on Role of Computer Academy, Worry Delta State, as I said earlier, you're going to apply this method to other schools. Same with Role of. It will load up all the courses that we offer. We are using institution to search now. So it's loading. It's trying to connect. So underneath this information, still loading. Okay, to avoid time wastage, after that thing has loaded, it will show you the programs that we we offer here. Like we have we have computer hardware engineering technology, we have a uh, computer software engineering. We have a uh, networking and system security, then also multimedia technology. Those are the courses listed under Rule of Computer Academy. Same is applicable to other universities, Polytechnic, NCE, and NID. So you are going to apply the same method to them all. So because of time, Let's browse by program. So I'm browsing by program now. Now if you can see now, we have degree awarding institution courses. We have NCE courses. It's almost the same thing. The difference is just the programs. We have uh, N, uh, ND courses and we have NID courses. When you click on them, you will see the various thing, the, the course combination that you need. Because of time, I can't do this for now. Sorry for that. So the next point of discussion is the e-syllabus, electronic uh, syllabus. Now, these are materials that you're supposed to study. Many of you have read, have read, have read, but you don't even know if you're actually reading the right thing. You don't even know if you're actually reading the right topic. JAM has a standard. 
they have what they want you to read. It's not everything. You cannot cover the full chemistry notebook. There are certain things that you need to read inside that chemistry. So let's pick one. Which one should we pick? We are picking chemistry. Okay, let's do English. <laughs> Mommy has said it too. Mommy has the final say. Okay, use of English. We're still having server issue. So let me just explain what is inside there. Inside, they have topics that they want you to study. In that topic, they have subtopics that they also want you to study. And they have a list of approved textbooks they also want you to read. That is what is inside here. We can't waste much time in here. Oh, sorry, the fourth is from Jam. Now, the next point of discussion is on study materials. Under study materials, as I said earlier, there are, there are books you are supposed to read. We have recommended books by JAM for you to study. And inside those books, they have topics they want you to read and subtopics. What you are supposed to know. They have career guides inside too. Now, some of you want to study Mexi. Do you actually know why you want to study that Mexi? Are you passionate about studying mercy? Or because your friend is actually, your friend is going for, want to study mercy? Now, I want to ask a question now. Can, can you, somebody please raise up your hand and tell me this is what I want to study and this is the reason why I want to study it? Do I have anybody in the house? Okay, fine. I have to study law because the reason why I need to study law is because sometimes I lost certain issues or sometimes too, I also want to make things with people. That's the reason why I want to study law. Do you know that studying law goes beyond that? What option of law do you want to study? That is the challenges we are having. We have to be very sure of what you want to do. Now with this career guide, this career guide Jam have listed the options under law and things you are supposed to know about those options. It serves as a guide to guide you why, on why you should study law, the reason why you should study international law, criminal law, whichever law you want to study, even if it's mercy. Whatever you want to study in mercy, there's a guide there. You don't just go for something because other people are going for it. You need to be passionate about what you are going for. So kill time, there is one important thing you all need to know about JAM. When it comes to admission, when it comes to admission, there's what JAM call quotas. They admit you based on that. So please, pay attention so that you will understand. Now, we have a quota based on merit. Let me say, for instance, now, and this, let me use Uniben. They want to admit a student in computer engineering. And JAM has approved 120 candidates for them to approve, to admit in that computer engineering. From that 120, 45% is part 
of the person they are going to admit. Admission based on merit, 45%. Now, when we talk about merit, there are these persons, the person, jam candidate that did well while writing their jam. They actually performed very well. Their, their, their score is, is something else. You should have overscored. Now, based on this, jam have 45% for these categories of person. We also have another category. We have the catchment area. Now, you need to know the catchment area where you are from. Your geographical area. This is what jam is going to admit you based on, for instance, now, you are from Delta State and you want to uh, seek for admission in Uniben. It's a good one because it's the same catchment area. But nevertheless, your performance should be good. That you are from, you are in this, within the same catchment area does not mean that you should not do well in jam. When you do well in jam, it gives you the privilege to get your admission with ease. We also have what they call um, educationally less developed states. Twenty percent of uh, of these uh, admission out of that one twenty is given to them. Let's use this illustration. I have one illustration with me here. Now, let's assume that Rural of Computer Academy want to admit candidates in a course computer hardware engineering, and it's one twenty and. 45% is on merit. So let's divide it now. 45% times 100. Divide by 100 times 120. Please give me the figure. No calculator. Okay. You will have a 54. For cashment area, 35 over 100 times 120. You have 42. That is meaning 40, 54 candidates will be admitted based on merit. Why 42 will be admitted based on catchment area? Then for the last one, we have a, a education less developed state. We have 20 divided by 100 times 120. That is 24. When you sum up together, you get 120 candidates. So meaning that you have to buckle up. You have to study hard. Search for information. Know what you are supposed to know as a can jam UTME candidate. It will help you a lot. And I know for those of you that want to write jam this year, God will help you. And you all will come out in flying colors in Jesus' name. Okay, let's put our hands together for that. Did you learn anything? Did you learn anything? Apart from those that came late. I hope you've learned something, right? Okay, we have a lot packaged for you today. But because of time, let us go straight to the very important things, right? Okay, so... Uh, next, we'll be taking Okay, um, give me one minute, please In your time We're going to go to The registration process Procedures at Approved CBT centers Do you know what a CBT center is? Eh? Do you know what it is? What's the meaning of CBT? Have you put, wait, okay. Computer based what? No. no. CBT means what? Computer based test. Before now, you, they'll give you answer sheets and you use your pencil and tick your answers, right? Now, you, we all know that the world now is now a global village and um, information, communication, technology, ICT is taking over. That is why those of you that are not computer literate, I'm sorry to say this, but you are very disadvantaged. If you are not computer literate, by the time you leave this seminar, you should go and get yourself equipped with computer skills. And I'm sure you know you are in the right place. So whatever information you need, if you are interested in any kind of computer training, we are here to help you. Because you can't be computer illiterate and you are going to write a computer based test how do you think you will perform well it will affect your confidence you cannot handle mouse and you want to use mouse to write exam is that possible good 
So now, very quickly, let's go to the procedures, the things that you need to do. Now, before I proceed, I want to ask a question. Was anybody here last year? Because last year I prayed for them that I don't want to see any of them this year. And I hope they all got admission. The same way all of you that are here this year, none of you are coming here next year in Jesus' name. Yeah. You will all get admission. But everything you will learn here today, I I want you to pay attention. Avoid distraction. I'm, I'm sure you have your writing materials, right? So that you don't fall victim. Now, let's proceed. Let's take note of some of the important dates. Mock registration begins 13th. That's next week, Monday. That's when your registration begins. What is the mock exam? The mock exam is just like a test, a pre-jam examination. And it's not compulsory, right? It is, um, it's not mandatory, it's, but it's advisable you take it. So the registration and the sales of form will begin next week, Monday. That's 13th. And it will end on the 17th. The sales, and please, get your jam form as early as it comes out to avoid rush. Then, the mock examination itself will come on 18th of February. So you can go to any CBT center and write the mock examination. It's just like preparation for the ex exact examination. Then, the UTME examination, the jam itself, we hold from 14th to 14th March. Now, the mock examination, take note of the months, please. January 13th, that's next week, to February 17th. That's when the form will be on sale. You know DE. DE means direct entry. Those of you that have done diploma programs before and you want to go for 200 level in the university, it's called direct entry. So they sell direct entry forms and it's also from JAM. So if you buy your direct entry form, none of you here is taking direct entry. So the sales of form is the same date and it expires the same day, February 17th. Please don't wait for deadline before you buy your form. Then the mock examination, like I said, is 18 February. It's, n it's not mandatory, but it's advisable you take it. It will prepare you. It will let you know what to expect in the jam examination. Then the examination proper is 14th March to 4th April 2020. Did you get Have you taken that down? Okay, let me give you one minute to take that down. Okay, can I proceed? Please, whatever you are doing, don't say there is still time. There is still time. There is no time again. So if you want to buy your form, immediately the form comes out on Monday. Go and buy it. I will tell you some of those things that you need to do. You need to start immediately. Because when it starts getting to the end, when the form will soon expire, you see rush. That's where you see many persons, they will just miss it. So please, it, you are very fortunate that you are getting this information early. So, so just, just go, go home, home get, get, tell, tell your, your parents. parents. You, you will, will get, get the, the list, list of payments, payments the amounts you need. need. On, On Monday, Monday, go and buy. buy. I'm, I'm moving, moving ahead, ahead, right? Yes. All right. Okay, okay so, so how, how to, to register, register for, for the... Sorry, 2020. Okay, okay, there are some things, things that, that you can, can do. There, there are some, some, uh, some, some steps. I want to give you seven quick steps. Number one, you must have a functional email address. How many of you have email address? If you don't have an email address, go. Very easy. It's very easy to open an email address. You can open an email address with your phone, preferably Gmail. Open a Gmail account, right? Then you must have a national identity number, NIN, as if you want to vote, right? How many of you have the NIN? If you don't have it, eh, this is very compulsory. And I will give you some steps on going about this, your registering for NIN. So you must have a, an email address, then 
you must have your own phone number. No using my daddy's or my mommy's phone number this time around. Do you understand? You must have your own phone, your own personal phone. If you don't have a phone, have a SIM card that is yours and you registered with your name. Then you buy the PIN. You must use accredited CBT centers. I will show you that. When you go to register for your um, NIN, your national identity number, please use correct information. Give them your correct name. Don't use abbreviations. Because the name you give them, the name they use in registering your identity number, is what JAM is going to get. Do you understand? So you give them your official name, not the one your friends call you. Because your, some of you, your name is Christabel, but your friend calls you Christy. So when you go to CBT, when you go to register, now you give them Christy. <laughs> no, please don't do that. Then you do biometric capture. That's your five, your ten fingers. Then let's proceed. <laughs> you are copying. <laughs> Learn to be fast. Your exam has started. So write fast. <laughs> <laughs> write very fast, please. I know some people will still write 2019, no? <laughs> write fast, write fast, write fast. You will not write to. They said the shortest pen is what? Eh? It's better than the longest memory. You will learn so much today. Your brain will be suffocated. <laughs> For those of you that are not writing, you need to write so that when you get home, you go through it again. There's no way you can remember everything. Please, if you are not with your writing material, ask someone to give to you, to tear paper for you. It's very important that you write. The mock. A tint. Yes. And how you can write at the back of your program if you have. Sorry, I want to look at the mock exam. 18 February. Look at it here. 18 February. All right. Can I proceed? Okay, can I proceed now? Okay, please be fast. Try and write fast. Copy fast. I hope you know what NIMC means. What does it mean? Ah, some are saying <laughs> some are saying commission, others are saying council. What does it mean? Is it commission or council? Okay, we get there. So I'm moving. Okay, let me leave this. Because the list of tests I have is the one they used last year. JAM has not released the list of books. This is the one they used last year. This compulsory text whether you are a science student or a student, you will read it. But JAM has not released the list of tests they will use this year. So I don't know if they will still use this Swiss 16. JAM has not released any information. So probably they will use this Swiss 16. And the last day at Focados High School. 
So please, I don't, there's no, I am not a literature student in this one. Whether you're a literature student, science or art, you will do it. Okay, now let me proceed, please. All right, now listen. Can you see the warning on the board? Candidates are warned. You can't see. Please, if you, you can't see why. Is it the reflection? Why can't you see? Should we turn off the light? Okay, you can see now. May you see in Jesus' name. <laughs> All right, now please don't go to cyber cafes. We have a lot of cyber cafes around. Don't go and do your registration at cyber cafe. Go to approved CBT centers. I will give you a list of CBT centers in Delta State. So you know the one close to you. Don't patronize. My elder brother has a cyber cafe. My daddy has a cafe. Don't use a cyber cafe, please. Go to a CBT center. Now, who is eligible to register for the UTME? Who is eligible to register? Now, before one can be eligible to register, you must have your national identity number. It is very important. You must have an email address. You must have completed or about to complete senior secondary school. I'm sure you all meet this criteria. Most of you meet this criteria. This particular one, you have completed or you are about to complete Senior secondary school, right? Yes. yes. You must have a minimum of five credits in your related course, in either WIAC, NECO, or NAPTEB. Then you must have at attained the age of 16. If you are below 16, you can take JAM UTME. Is anyone below 16 here? All right, let's proceed. You can register if you are below 16. But please, at the time of admission, by September or October, if you are below 16, the universities will not admit you. All right, thank you, sir. So if you are approaching 16, you can register. If you are approaching 16, you can register. All right, now, let's look at the process. As I'm talking, if you want to write, you can write, because I won't wait for you. The process, number one, you must have attained your national identity number. That is number one. Before you proceed to get your form, you must have gotten your national identity number with your complete, your correct name, your complete name, your date of birth, and all the information they will require. Then number two, you must have a personal phone number. I've said that before. Now, it is this phone number that you will use at the NIN, the NIMC office. That is the phone number that will be attached to your, your, your profile. It is that any message they are sending you, any notification they want to send through text message, it is that number. Don't misplace that number. Do you understand? That's why you should not use another person's number. Don't use your brother, your mother, your father's number. Use your personal number. Then, that this is the procedure. You must write this. You will type the word. When you have gotten your NIN number. Any phone number that has been used for jam registration cannot be used. It will be rejected. Make sure the number has not been used by your sister, your brother, or any other person before. Okay, now, to start, this is the first thing you need to do. When you have gotten your NIN number, right, you will type NIN space, then add your phone number. This is the very first thing you should do. Type NIN space, then your 11 digits. Okay, the NIN is the number. NIN Space, the, 11, the NIN number you will be given is 11 digits. You can see the example here. NIN, a little space, one space, then you will type the 11 digit NIN number as a test message and send it to 55019. 
It is the first thing you will do to get your code. There should be a space between NIN and the NIN number. This is not your phone number. This is the number that NIMC will give to you after your registration. It is your personal number. It's like your BVN. Please keep it discreetly. Keep all your information discreetly. You will type the word NIN. Did you get that? In capital letter. In capital letter. NIN space, the 11 digits. You can see now that you can't even start the process without your NIN number. You can't start the process without your NIN number. So you will send it to 55. You send it to what? Good, 55019. Now I'm going forward, right? If you, okay. Have you gotten that? Write only this one. Type, type, type. You will send it as SMS, right? You will send it as, as SMS to this number. Okay, now you send NIN space, then your NIN number, and send it to this code, this short code, 55019. Then when you have done that, let's proceed. After sending the message to 550, you will receive on your phone. Receive on your phone 10-digit profile code. Jam will send you your 10-digit profile code. When you send that code as SMS to 55019, they will send you your 10-digit profile code. And the name that you used in registering your NIN. That's why I told you, you must give them your official name. Then, NIN will send a confirmation to that same phone. Make sure the phone you are using, the screen is not blind. <laughs> so that you can receive the messages. Because they will be sending you a lot of messages. Make sure the phone is with you. No, any phone. You can use Touch Nokia to do it. As long as, maybe they will collect four Naira or something. Okay, so as you just get recharge card inside in case. They won't collect more than maybe four naira, but have at least 100 naira inside. You are sending a test. If you are using a touch light Nokia, if you are using a touch light phone, you can use it. It's test message. Then you will get your NIN confirmation. Then you will get IBAS alert for pre-checking, for pre-registration checking. So you will get all these messages. Immediately you send that code, right? Now, this 10 digit code that we send you is very important. Keep it safe. Immediately you get it, write it somewhere. Write it somewhere. Get a diary, write all the information, any information they are sending you. Make sure you are writing them down. Now, with this profile code, follow me. Oh, this is stage by stage. With this profile code, with this profile code, you will, you will take this profile code to where you will buy your e-pin. You will take the profile code, the 10-digit profile code they will send you. It's what you will use to buy your e-pin. I will show you the procedure stage by stage. Now, let me continue. National Identity Management Commission. Those of you that said commission, clap for yourself. <laughs> if you said council, don't clap for yourself. All right. Now, there are se NIMC centers everywhere. Now, those CBT centers, they are attaching CBT centers to, they are attaching NIMC codes, um, registration point to CBT centers. They are attaching the, the NIMC registration to CBT centers. So when you get to, for those of you that don't know anything about the NIMC locations, I know they do them at local governments. They do them at local government. I did mine at a local government. 
Then you can go to a CBT center. They will show you the one that is closest to them. Right? Now, according to JAM, he said they will even provide transportation for a candidate that goes to a CBT center. I don't know. Don't rely on this, please. <laughs> Always be ready. So when you go to a JAM CBT center, ask them where you can do your NIN registration. Go with your transport. Okay? Uh -huh. All right. So in case you make mistake in your name, Please, before they submit, if you give them information, before they click submit, read it. Please, don't be in a hurry. Usually when you are entering at that biodata stage, where you are entering your information, your name, your date of birth, your age, your phone number, please don't make mistake. That's why some of us, maybe we are 18, our work is showing 29 or 28. Because at that point of registering that time, we did not know it was very important. We didn't know that our age. Your age is going to show on your original YA certificate. So if you are 18 and you filled another year, it is that year. When you are looking for a job tomorrow, they will tell you it's a forged result you are using. I'm telling you, I'm a victim of that. So please, you should be careful in entering your information. Enter your full name. If your name is Organel Bakbororo, don't go and write <laughs> or bus. Don't go and write or bus. Please enter your full name. I'm begging you because it is very important. Tell the person before you submit, please let me go through it again. Because if you make mistake, you'll be you'll be going through so many stress. Now, if you make mistake, eh, you will be you will go back to the NIMC. Jam will not do any correction. Jam is not collecting any data from you. It is what they get from the N NIN information. That's what they are using. So if you make any mistake, you are going back to the NIMC office to correct it. They are the ones sending your information to JAM. So please don't make mistakes so you don't go back and forth. And you know those NIMC officials, sometimes they, they are not smiling, some of them. They will stress you. I'm telling you, they will stress you. Especially now that Jam is using them. If you see the queue now, if you are going, go early in the morning, go with flask, full flask. Go with extra money, go with full flask if possible. Because the queue is very long. So please, please, the registration. Just carry your file in case they request for anything. Have a passport in case they need, in case. They don't need your passport, so they will capture you. Like they captured you at the front desk. But please, just make sure so that you don't go back home. Let it be you have access, everything they want. Give them your correct information. Now, if you lost your profile code, don't lose your profile code. I don't really like stress. When you lose something, you start looking for it again. You start going through the process all over. I don't like it. That's why I said, please, any information they send to you, write it down. Because I don't like telling people, I'm sorry, sir, sorry, sir, I hate it. Don't put yourself in a position where you will tell people, sorry, sir, sorry, sir. Why did you lose it? Sorry, sir. You are careless. Sorry, sir. <laughs> Please. So if you lost your profile code, you just send resend to 55019, and you will get on the same phone number. Please don't lose your profile code, but in case, Type resend in capital letter, send to 55019. Now, after payment, okay, we've not gotten to this place. We will still, I, want, I will still take you through the procedure of payment and getting your e pin. So let's not rush. Now, please, there is no cash payment. This one will have a lit, be a little challenging for us. Don't go with cash. Jam has mandated that nobody collects cash. So it's either you are going with um, it's either you are going with your ATM card or you are going with phone to do transfer. <laughs> <laughs> so please, I don't know how you will do this. All right. uh, there's no problem about that. Some of the CBD centers have banks that are attached to them. Some of the banks go there to provide the services. So if you go with if you go with cash, especially the one at College of Education, Education Warrior, they have 
banks that come to collect money from students. So don't be afraid about that. Are you happy? Okay. Now let's continue. Now let's look at the details. The step by step to make your payment and get your e pin. Let's look at the step by step. Okay? Number one, the first means of payment is through the bank. You can pay through the bank. When you go there, you present your profile code. Remember, you sent your NIN to one code, right? And they sent you a 10 digits profile code. It is that code that you will provide at the center where you are making your payment. Maybe you are paying at the bank. If you give them the money and you give them your profile code, they will give you your e-pin. That is your first step. That's, if, that's what you need to do. Then, they will give your, your e-pin will be sent to that same phone number. Number two, if you want to pay through POS, these are the banks. These are the banks that you can pay to. You can go to Access Bank, Echo Bank, FCMB, Fidelity GT, Jay's Polaris Sterling Union. Okay, sorry, B. So these are the banks that, um, yes. Okay, now let's continue. If you want to pay through POS, you also give them your code. Then you give them the card. How much are they withdrawing? 3,500. Then bank charges. Depends on the bank and how much they are charging. How much? Okay, 200. Thank you. So the, what you are paying for the EPIN is 3,500. Then bank charges. So if you are going, make sure you have at least maybe three, maybe 4,000 or 5,000 in the account. Or you go with extra cash, right? Don't go with 3,500 so you don't get stranded. All right. You will give them the profile code. They will send you your EP. You can see that the profile code. They don't need any information from you again because all your information are already with NIMC. So just give them your profile code. They will give you your PIN, right? That PIN is very important. Okay, you can pay through MMOs. These are available at CBT Center. These are agents, right? So you go there, you pay to them, you give them your profile code, and they give you your E-PIN. It is not your profile code you are going to register with, right? The profile code, you will use it to make your payment then they will give you your e-pin. It is your e-pin you are going to register with. All right. Then, using ATM, you can go to any ATM and pay. Yes, when you go to the ATM, select bill payment. Select bill payment. And click jam. You will see the options there. Pay bill, pay bill, you will see other options there. Check jam. And they will ask for your profile code. You give them your profile. Don't do all these things. So you are doing only one, right? Or you want to pay how many times? <laughs> I'm just giving you many options. So that you will do the one that is convenient for you. You are paying once. Do you understand? O okay. So, now... Okay, this is online payment. This one is not advisable. Don't do the online payment, please. Now, immediately you get that e-pin, you are going to the CBT center. Now, when you get your e-pin, you get to the CBT center, they will collect 700 naira from you. CBT center charge is 700. Don't pay more than that. That is what is mandated. Go with extra cash. <laughs> please go with extra cash. Uh -huh. But what they are mandated to collect is 700 Naira. So once you have gotten your profile code and you give them your e-pin, 
you will go there and give them your e pin now this is the form you will fill your names date of birth nationality nigerian ghanaian american wherever you came from local government your local government the local government in the in the state then the state in the local government no <laughs> no wait <laughs> your state of origin <laughs> okay no listen no listen the state in the nationality in the local government <laughs> is that correct <laughs> no the local government in the state in the nationality <laughs> Okay, then you will tell them your gender, your picture. Please, they, you will not, they will snap you. They will capture you there. You don't go with passport. They don't need passports. Okay, you will also give them your choice of institution. Please be sure. Okay, you can also make changes later though, although you will pay if you want to make some changes. So you will tell them the state, your, the, the school you, are, you want to go for, your qualification, whether it's O-level, then your UTME subjects. The subjects you want to take for the UTME. I'm sure by now you know the subjects you need to take. <laughs> okay. Then you will choose whether you want to write the mock exam or not. Right? Then you will they will register you for the UTME examination. Then they will review your entries and you will confirm the correctness of your information. Always confirm before you submit. Don't be in a hurry. Then they will give you your registration slip by your biometric authentication. What's biometric authentication? Eh? Your fingerprint. Remember you've done fingerprint at NIMC before, right? You will just use it to verify. Please, you can't send somebody to register for you, right? You can't send your mom or your dad or your brother to register for you because you need to be there to verify with your fingerprints. All right. Then let's continue. They will give you the reading test and CD. Please. So you most likely pay for this. Last year it was 500. You know I told you those books. Those books, Sweet 16 and the last day of uh, Focados. Uh -huh. So just go with extra cash. So I'm very sure it's 500 because that's what they paid last year. So that is it. Don't come back for prosy. That's don't, don't send somebody to register for you. Go there and do the registration yourself. Now this is the payment process. Everything I'm explaining now in one diagram. The first thing is to use your NIN to create your profile code. How do you do that? Who can tell me? Somebody should tell me. How can you use your NIN to create your profile code? That's the first thing you do now. Raise your hand, please, and use the letter code. Hello? Hello? What? You need to send a certain text message. What are you sending? You are sending the NIN, you will type NIN, then you space it, then send the NIN number. And send it as a text message to what? 55019. To this number. NIN plus 11 digits number. Then you will look at the second stage. You will receive your profile code. Because this is the stage where some people will start failing already. People, some persons at this stage, they have already failed jam. At this stage, they have already failed jam. Because if you don't get the foundation right, there's no way you can even write the exam. You have failed already. And I don't want to see you coming for this seminar next year. You can see we don't have space. <laughs> Do you understand? So please, you have to pay attention. So you will receive the 10-digit codes. You have to be very careful at this stage. When you receive the 10-digit code, you will take this code to wherever you want to make your payment. Either you want to pay through POS, ATM, bank. It is through this PIN. It is through this code. When 
you make your payment of 3,500, that they will give you your E-PIN. It is that E-PIN that you take to your CBT center. And we have 587 CBT centers across Nigeria. And I will show you the ones we have in Delta State. Okay, 650. We have 650. Okay, they've added more because the demand is increasing. So it's now 650 across the country. All right, let's proceed. These are the CBT centers. Please locate the one closest to you. There is one at um, Ozora Bench Hill School. There is one at Bench Hill School. There is a CBT center at Bench Hill School. College of Education, they have two CBT centers there. Okay, College of Education, Agbo, and College of Education, Worry. The yes, CBT Center has College of Education Worry here. Day Spring Christian College, Delta State Library at Asaba. Hello, are you listening? Should I go to the next slide? Then we have Day Spring Christian. Okay, I've done that. Delta State Polytechnic or Guashuku, they have a CBT Center. Delsu. Delsu has two CBT centers. Three. Delsu Campus 1, Campus 2, Campus 3. They have CBT centers. Then, Edwin Clark University, Kiagbodo, they have one. Fet Massing Computer, ICT, Ogbofu, Iseluku. Holy Ghost International School, Izomoro, DSC. Those of you in uh, Owea, Alaja, Udu, Delta State. Hollywood International School Asaba, Izisko Obos Institute of Marine Studies. That one is at Okere Okberi Koko Road. Okay, is that one close to you? Okere Okberi Koko Road, Izisko Obos Institute of Marine Studies. Then this one is at Asaba. James Welch, Isaimevor Ogeli Road. Michael and Cecilia Ibru University, Agbarot, Ugeli. They have three centers. Michael and Cecilia Ibru University, they have three centers. For those of you in Wari, you can go to College of Education, the PTI. PTI, they also have. I'm not sure. Eh? Yeah. Uh, PTI, Petroleum Training Institute. PTI School. The ICT Center, they have a CBT Center there. So the ones that you can go to, you can go to Kole, you can go to PTI. Do you understand? Huh? You can go to Bench Hill School. Okay. Okay. Pasha International School, opposite Blue Water, Niger Catch Road, Ekpan. Ekpan. There's one there. That's the CB. You are not going there to generate your profile code. I hope you know that. What are you going there to do? Eh? Yeah. You are taking your e pin there to do your registration, right? Then Saple Technical College. So now let's continue. It is only when you have been biometrically verified that you'll be able to log in. You must have completed all these stages. You cannot enter the examination hall without your login. So if you don't go through all those processes, there's no way you can enter the examination hall. Now, in writing your examination, you cannot spend less than one hour. You cannot spend less, no matter how much you know it. You, can, it's, you cannot leave the examination hall less than, in less than one hour. Please take your time to write. Okay? Uh -huh. We will get there. So this is the examination cubicle. <laughs> Are you excited? <laughs> it's okay. This is where you will sit. No giraffing. Hello? Hello?
Hello. Hello. Let's proceed. You will see your seat numbers. You will see your seat numbers on the cubicle. You sit there. Okay? That's why it's good to do the mock. That's why it's good to do the mock exam. If you, if you do the mock exam, you would have experienced this before the day of the examination. Do the mock exam. In the CBT center. Yes, yes, where you are going for the EPIN. Yes, that's where you will do this. Okay, okay, okay. It is, it is not all CBT centers participate in the mock exam. Depends on the number of candidates that register for a jam can force you to any, but it has to be within your local area. All right, thank you, sir. All right, I hope you've taken note of that. Okay? So, please, it's very important to take the mock exam. You if you don't register early, you may be taken out of worry. Yes, because once the centers here are already fully booked, it can be sent to Kiagbodo. No, not just. It can be sent to Kiagbodo or Abraka or uh, Cecilia Ibru to go and write your examination. So the earlier you register, the better, so that you will not be posted outside town. Thank you, sir. All right. So I want you to also know that JAM has stated that CCTV cameras, please, CCTV cameras will be fixed in all CBT centers. As you are writing, they are watching you. Don't carry Oshuko into the hall. <laughs> Do you know what Oshuko means? <laughs> assistance. Don't carry assistance into the examination hall. Because CCTV cameras, you they will, Big Brother is watching you. You watch Big Brother, right? Everything you are doing, they, they, are, they can see you. Even in their toilets, they have CCTV cameras. Okay. Now, if you log, okay, let's continue. I've talked about this before. Okay. Um, to reset your profile password. Okay. Now, when you go to those CBT centers, they will create a profile for you. And you will have a password. Only you can assess your profile if you want to make any adjustment. Now, if you lost your profile password, you will send password, space, and your email address. Your password, space, email address to 55019. So your password, please keep your information secret. Don't tell your best friend your information. Like daddy told you, daddy told you at the beginning while he was giving his speech that somebody's mother changed the information, right? So nobody should have access so that somebody will not go and tamper with your information. Don't trust anybody, okay? Keep your information secret. Don't share your password with anybody. Okay, time. Okay. All right. Don't, when you go to CBT Center, JAM has mandated that CBT Center should not ask for your password. Immediately you've gotten your password, they have other information that they can use to log in into your account. You don't give them password. You say it is not an offense to demand for any password of candidates before rendering any service. Don't give any CBT center agent your password. Do you understand? They can log in with your username. You will give them your name. To enter the can, uh, you can, you, all you need to log in is the candidate's email and profile code and the registered phone number. Don't give them your password, okay? All right, let me move very fast. Now, if you forgot your password, open your email, okay, um, email service provider. Now, if you forget your password, that you want to, you want them to give you another password, they will send a code to your email, right? 
then you will verify the email that you used at the beginning. So you must use a functional email. So in case they send anything there, you'll be able to access it. All right, these are just some problems that one can encounter. But please, try not to encounter any of these problems. Now, there are some questions that we ask you at the CBT Center. Your phone number must be registered. That phone number you are using is the one you used to register at the beginning. You can't give them another phone number. Please don't give them another phone number. Give them the one you used in registering at the beginning. The email must be the same thing too. If you have not created your profile e or email, no deal and no show. They won't attend to you. So you cannot jump any of the procedures. Okay? Jam broke you. They have told you about the jam broke you before. You can use it to check your requirements and the programs you want to go for to know we, what and what you need. For some of you that say you don't know what subject you want to write, this broke you is supposed to guide you. Yes. So it's on, like she told you, like my colleague told you, you can just download it on the iBus, uh, on, on, on Play Store. Then if you have any problem at all, you can send a ticket to support.jam.gov.ng. You can make your complaint, you can send your complaints to these people. And you put your email address or your phone number there. They will attend to you. Now, these are some payments. I will not go through all of them. Your profile creation you are doing with your phone is free of charge. Your UTME registration, like I told you before, is 3,500. The CBT center, they are collecting how much? 700. Then, direct entry is the same thing. Then, when you Please, if you are registering, whether for direct entry or UTME, is the same fee. You can register for UTME, and when you eventually have admission for direct entry, you don't need to pay another fee or go do another registration. You just migrate. So if you have written uh, A level or have national innovation or uh, ND or a diploma or whatever, IGMB or JPEG, and you want to use this to, you still want to write UTME, there's no need to go and pay for direct entry. Write UTME, register for UTME when the result is out and you're not qualified or you don't want to use it, you just go to jam this thing and migrate to direct entry without paying any extra fee. So don't do double registration, please. D are you clear? Okay. Okay, so those are some of the payments you will make. Mm -hmm. To upload your SSE result is free. Then change of institution. Maybe you want to change school. It's 2005. CBT Center will collect 100 Naira. Uh, what else is important to you here? Print results. Sleep when your result is out. It's 1,000 Naira. The center will collect 100 Naira. To print your admission letter is 1,000. Then fee. You, don't, you have not gotten to those, that stage. Okay, so you just take note of the important... Now, you see why I said don't make mistake? Making mistake doing this thing is expensive. To make correction is expensive. For instance now, if you make mistake in your name, to do the correction, can you see how much? And I, okay, you have to go to name, okay. So please don't make mistake so you don't pay any unnecessary fee. So printing of results slip is 1,000. Printing of admission later, 1,000. Acceptance letter on CAPS free. If you want to accept or reject an admission, it's free. If you want to create support tickets, it's free. Now, these are the dates again. I'm ending with the dates. Please take note of these dates. Don't forget, on Monday, the form will be out. On Monday, go and get your form. Go. As you are living here now, today is Saturday, right? On Monday, go look for any name. NIMC office and do your name registration so that you can start. Because if you don't do that, you cannot continue, you cannot proceed. 
So get your email address ready today. If you don't have a phone, go get a SIM card today. So that you will know on Monday you are going to NIM office to do your registration. Thank you. NIM office are located in local government head offices. If you are living in the front, go to your local government office at GRA. If you are in worry, go to the office here to go and do registration. There is already crowds in their center, so you have to be patient. In most cases, you may be asked to part with money before you can even get the form to fill. Because if you don't get the form to fill, nobody will attend to you. So please. You can get it, yes, you can get it, but now that there's the high demand, there are a lot of my practices that are already going on in the center, so you have to cope with that. All right. So next, we are going to take, we are going to take, hmm? all right. She said I should entertain you. I told you we have gifts, right? Please help me with the gifts. Let's play a game first. I want to ask you a question. If you answer it, if you can answer three questions correctly, you will get a gift. Give me three. So well. All right. All right, let me ask. Okay, now answer this question. What tastes better than it smells. It tastes better than it smells. <laughs> if you know it, raise your hand. Okay. Okay, now this one is English. Anybody can answer, but if you raise your hand, I will allow you first. Now, you have to choose the option that best conveys. There's an underlined word. His heart in his mouth. Now, in ha his heart in his mouth. Now, his heart in his mouth. Which word best conveys these words? Courageously. A, courageously. B, with such unusual cowardice. C, with a lot of confusion in his speech. D, without being able to make up his mind. E, with, fr e, with fright and agitation. His heart, for somebody's heart to be in his mouth. What does it mean? Does it mean to be courageous or with cowardice or with confusion or without being able to make up his mind? Or with fright and agitation. Do you know it? Eh? Eh? Correct. With fright and agitation. For your heart to be in your mouth, it means you are scared. Okay, let's do another one. What does dark horse? I want to give you I want to give you a list of words. You will tell me the one that means dark horse. In the match against the Uplanders team, the submarines turned out to be the dark horse. Dark horse. What's the meaning of dark horse? A. They played brilliantly. B. Played below their usual form. C. Won unexpectedly. D. Lost as expected. D. E. Won as expected. Dark horse. Now, there's a match that was played and one team turned out to be the dark horse. Now, the team that turned out to be the dark horse, what did they do? Okay. Hello, no chorus answer. Who knows it? Do you know it? Eh? Okay, give What does it mean, please? One house. 
won unexpectedly, correct. They won unexpectedly. Clap for her. All right, so we have two, one. Lady, please stand up. We have two, one. All right, let's take another question. What does small fry mean? Small fry, listen, no. Only the small fry get punished for such social misdemeanors. Small fry. What does small fry mean? Does it mean small boys, unimportant people, frightened people, frivolous people, or inexperienced people? The two of you, do you have any idea? Small fry in the society. If you say the small fries in the society, what does it mean? Small boys, unimportant people, frightened people, frivolous people, or inexperienced people? Eh? Please uh, give. Please say it from there. Cor say it. Very correct. On important people, they are the small fries. Please come for your gift. Clap for him. Clap for her. Hello, madam. You will see answer. If you answer two more questions, I'll give you your gift. I don't want to go back. All right, so what's your name, please? What's your name? Chief Wazy, what school are you? All right, please clap for him. So on behalf of Roll Up Computer Academy, I want to present this tour well. Be a good ambassador of Roll Up Computer Academy. Congratulations. Clap for him as he goes back. So please, we want to take... We have a lot of gifts here, but because of time, let's take the next lecture. So the next lecture is on JAM UTME. Okay. Okay, JAM UTME. CAPS. JAM UTME admission procedure through CAPS. Let's clap for Lydia, please. If you want to clap for me, I'll be. There's God, Good afternoon, all. Are you put tired? Yeah. Oh, yeah, stand up and size your body. So, all of you should stand up. Just wind this way. Get up, please. There is space. Okay, so you are okay then. It's all right. Okay, our topic of discussion is on JAM UTME admission procedure through central admission processing system, which is CAPS. That is the meaning of CAPS, central admission processing system. Now, CAPS is a step-by-step -step process flow for admission exercise for the education and information of the general public, stakeholders, particularly the candidates. Now, whatever thing any JAM UTME candidate want to do, it is with the aid of CAPS that you do it. Your registration, your acceptance, whatever you want to do, even if you want to do changes, maybe you, make a, you made a mistake while uh, um, putting your date of birth or your, your let me say, your local government. When, to, when you want to correct it back, it is through CAPS that you will do that. Same with every institution. The institution, they are called the stakeholders. They make use of CAPS to admit you. And there are processes. It's a process. It's, it follows from now, from... Now, knowing the numbers of candidates that they are supposed to admit, check the cutoff mark, and every other thing that has to do with the candidate. Now, 
The following are the processes that JAM UTME DTS go through before they are finally admitted. Some of you think that after you writing your your JAM exam admission, you just get your admission once. No way, it's not like that. Too. There are processes, and there are, you have you have a, so much parts to to play. You have a role to play here. So let's see what the rules are now. This is the first step. Forward the name of candidates who pass jam. Now, for everybody that choose a particular institution as their first choice of institution, once you are fortunate to pass, your name, your information will be forwarded to your choice of institution. First of all, you need to choose that institution as your first choice of institution because if you don't choose them, there is no way they will admit you. And these processes takes place in CAPS. This is the first step. Now, the second step is CAPS cut off mark. JAM therefore requests all institutions to use the list to determine the respective cut off marks and forward the general cut off mark list to JAM ahead of JAM policy meeting. Now, as I said earlier in my first presentation, every institution have their general cut off mark. Like as at last year, they have a cut off mark they use. This year, when they will go for policy meeting, they will also release a new cut off mark they are going to use. Last year, 160 was used for every public universities. That is the general cut off mark for every public university, the minimum. Then 140 was used for private universities. We have 120 for public polytechnic. We have uh, 110 for private polytechnics. We also have 100 for College of Education. Then 90 for Innovation Enterprise Institution. That is where role of computer falls under. If you score 90 and above, 90, 91, 92, 80, whatever it may be, we will admit you from 90. So that is the last year cut of mark. So the general cut of mark they are talking about here, let me use the 160 for, for private investing. Please, for public investing. So that is the general cut of mark. Then in-house, for instance, now we have a faculty of uh, engineering. Inside the engineering, so let's say school of engineering, inside engineering, we have a civil engineering, we have mechanical engineering. They don't use the same cut of mark. The school have a, an assigned cut of mark for those departments. So now the school need to gather the cut of mark for each of these faculties and gather them and send it back to JAM. How do they send it? It is through the same CAPS, Central Admission Processing System. Now we have another one, JAM CAPS Departmental Cut of Mark. The cut of mark that has been sent by the institution they now receive this cut of mark in caps. Once they receive it, this cut of mark is either, is, is either sent by the academic board or the senate. They receive it and make sure that whatever they must have been put in caps corresponds with what they have sent. So these are some of the processes that your results go through. Now we have CAP specialists trained. Who are the specialists? Three representatives from each institution are trained. We either have the, the counselor, that is the, the provost. We have uh, the registrar or rectors from, uh, from our institution. Let me say for NID, Polytechnic, we have rectors there. Then we have the DEX officer. Now, these persons are trained on how to use these caps to admit candidates. There is a process which I will relate to you later. Jam cast policy meeting. Now in this meeting, like this year now, there will be a, a meeting will be held with all head of institutions, either in Abuja or whichever location they will decide to choose this year. What are they going there to discuss? They're going to discuss the, court, the general cut of mark, as I've told you earlier, that they have general cut of mark for institution. It is institution that will determine what they want to take. Let's say, for instance, now, they have a, 
cut off mark for NID. That is uh, our, uh, let me say, NID uh, program, uh, Innovation Enterprise Institution 90. Now, every institution we, de we decide if it's 90 that we accept. Although JAM approved 90. But the institution will decide that maybe we are admitting from 100. And if they are admitting for 100, they need to indicate it in caps. All the information should be there. So that is what they gather there to do when they get to the meeting. They discuss on the general cut of mark that will be assigned to institution. This is very essential. Uploading, uploading results to Jam Potter. There are some of you here now that have not written WAEC. They are yet to register for WAEC. Now, at the point of buying your jam form, you will use awaiting results. Please and please. Once that result is out, endeavor to upload the result because without the result being uploaded, there is no admission for you. You cannot be admitted from CAPS. That is one of the rules. Please. The next one is that some institutions, they actually conduct post-UTME screening for those candidates that have been downloaded. Now, every institution has their own way of conducting screening. Some, they do a written exam. Some, they use, do CBT exam. Like we, we use screening. We screen your results to be sure that the course you have chosen corresponds with the subjects that you wrote in your YEG. So, some institution does this, why some don't. So it depends on your choice of institution. Now, this is the final stage of admission. Least successful candidates in CABS. As I said earlier now, I said earlier that three representatives from institution will be trained. Director, the provost, the, the desk officer. So now, the registrar, admission officer, all these are categories of persons that will be trained. Why are they being trained? So that they'll be able to admit you the way it's supposed to be. These are the stages. Now, with those list of candidates that have been up, that have uploaded back, the desk officer checks if this candidate actually met the school criteria. They'll be sure that these students actually choose them as first choice. They review it and send this same information to the head of institution, either the rector or registrar, for recommendation. Now, the registrar or the rector recommends this candidate, all these things I'm explaining, they are done in caps, recommend this candidate to the DEX officer, JAM DEX officer. Now, JAM, Jam DEX officer does the final admission. What she do, she compares. She check that whatever you have sent is the information you actually downloaded and you uploaded back. This same, they, they, they need to be sure too that this same information, that the student, the candidate actually choose you. Choose that institution as their first choice of institution. Once she is done with that comparison and she is sure, she approves your admission. It does not end there. You have rules to play too. Now, note, no candidate will be considered for admission without the upload of his or her O-level result. I keep on repeating this. Without your O-level result, for those persons that made use of our waiting result, if you don't upload it, there is no admission for you that year. Please, endeavor to do that. Now, this is your own part. What you are supposed to do in CAPS. How to accept admission in CAPS. We have, they, are, they have explained to you how you can get your phone, what you are supposed to do, how you can use IBAS to gather information about your institution. Now you have written the exam. Result is out. Schools are check, they, they are checking their list if you are, if you actually met to the criteria for them to admit you. Now how are you going to accept this admission? First of all, ensure you have. A active uh, bond, that is a data on your phone. You can actually do the, uh, the acceptance on your phone. Except you want to go and pay money in CBT Center, they will do it for you. It's what you can do. You can do it on your laptop. You can do it on your desktop. Whichever way you want to use for the admission. Now, 
you need to open your favorite browser. Jam uh, uh, advice you should make use of Google Chrome. It's fast. So what you need to do with Google Chrome is for you to log in this address, www.jam.org.org.ng.slash e facility. That is when you have been registered for Jam. If you try it now, it won't work. Oh. It won't work anything because you don't have the, uh, your, your username and you don't have your password. Now, if you want to use it on your phone, if you want to use, try this application on your phone, your Android phone, you go to your Google Chrome. Are you with me? Go to your Google Chrome. You will see this red button. Some person is going to be showing a, tr a tree, tree spot there. You click on it. It's on phone view. We want to convert it to desktop view. So when you click there, you go down, you see desktop site. You click on it. So to make it smaller, everything pertaining to cars will show. So that is how it is. You can use the same process I'm going to explain to you here. That is what you, you can use the same process with your phone. So once you log in, when you have registered for JAM and you passed your JAM, once you log in, put in your username and your password, it takes you straight to this interface. So this is that place that is being ticked. That is where you are going to click. You click on that place. Check 2020 UTME admission status on CAPS. You click there. It takes you to another interface. Welcome. Now you go to admission status. Are you seeing it? Why? Who said it? <laughs> you, are very you are very close now. Why are you not seeing it? Can you see it now? Admission status. Have you seen it? There's no time to waste, so please. So it will take you to another interface. Now, when you open the interface, certain things are to appear. If they don't appear, mean that you're not in the right place. Now, your, your details include jam scores, institution, date of birth, etc. This will appear when you have successfully logged in to jam carbs portal. No, so this, this is somebody's information now. Can you see it? So that is how it is. If you want to check now, you click on, click to check admission status. Have you seen it? Are you seeing it? Mm, sorry. Can you see it? Are you seeing that red? Dot. That is where you are going to click. It's easy. When you try it on your phone, you will see it there. It's something you can understand. It's not hard. So the next step, if you are given admission and you like the school, then click on accept. How do you click on accept? Now, if you go to this place, you will see accept admission or reject admission. Can you see it? So this is where you do the acceptance. Now, there are certain schools that will, let me, let, maybe you change your first choice of institution. They did not admit you. And another institution sent you an uh, offer for admission. You accepted them. Although you have not carried that research to that institution. But when you have done that, you are sure that you don't want that institution. Don't accept it. Reject the admission. Because whenever, if you decide to accept admission, your admission for that year is closed till next year. So how do you how to confirm if you have accepted admission? This is how it appears. If you have accepted admission, the, the reject spot, I, can, can you see anything here? Initially, it was showing something. So the only one that will be active is accept admission. And underneath it, it will show successfully updated. That is how to know that you have accepted admission. But nevertheless, you will get information from JAM for acceptance if you actually change to a particular 
institution. Now, if the institution and course space is blank or you have not been offered admission, then don't click on accept admission. Just keep checking. Check. Keep checking. This is your own responsibility. The jam office, jam dex officer, the registrar, the rector, they have played their part. It's just for you to play your own part. Be very careful not to accept admission from institution. You are not too sure of their cause, as I said earlier. Lastly, once you accept the admission offered, your admission door is closed for that year. So be careful, very, very careful. Candidates who have not been offered admission should closely monitor admission through CAPS. Sorry for that. Please, don't sleep. Make sure your phone has data. Or you go to CBD Center. Check. Because it costs your parents to pay that money to buy that admission form. And I believe it's a stress to you to read your book, burn candles overnight, trying to study for jam. And at the end of the day, you are supposed to get the admission, but because of your carelessness, you didn't get it. Please. Endeavor to check. And I know this year, as my colleague said, people will not return for this jam seminar again. Amen. Thank you. Emphasis. Check your caps. Many people do not know that jam has offered them admission because they are not checking. And in most cases, your phone is your parents, your email password is with the uh, Saba Cafe. So you don't even know anything, any e information that has come in. Last year, we had a situation, okay, okay, last year, last session, where we, somebody was looking for admission into our school. After we sent the proposal to, uh, to Jamb, Jamb said, this guy has been offered admission to invest of you also. Isn't it? If that's all for you. So when I ask the person that you should go and accept that of you or reject it before we can give him admission, he was very happy that we gave him such information because he was not even aware that he had been offered admission. So he was you always make sure that you are on your toes. Thank you. Take our next lecture. Are you tired? Yes. What do you want to do now? <laughs> okay, refreshment. Yes, I've sent them to get the refreshment. So while they are bringing the refreshment, I know you've all tried. But whatever is worth doing is worth doing well, right? Because before we put out the publicity to invite you, we make sure we also prepare very well, right? So that whatever transport you are paying to come to this place will not be wasted. So you have come. We are the ones training you and you are the ones getting tired. <laughs> eh? Okay, so very, this one is very interesting. Okay, we're going to take how to prepare, pass jam, NECO, WAEC examination, and secure admission. Now, the aim of writing every examination is success, right? And nobody was, wants to waste his or her time. You don't want to be taking one exam over and over again. So this knowledge is very, very important. Pay attention. I'm not going to waste time. I'm going to be very quick. So if you want to write, write only the points. Write only the highlights. Don't write the explanations. Now, like my colleague has told you, your first choice of institution can be either a polytechnic. This is what most people don't know. There is university, the tertiary institutions in Nigeria. We have universities, we have polytechnics, we have monotechnics, we have colleges of higher education, 
then we have enterprise institutions. Innovation Enterprise Institution, that is IEI. But most of us, we only know the university and the polytechnic. That is what we know. But I want you to know that if you want to really get admission, like you don't want to sit at home, you need to explore other options. Okay? So, like Roll of Computer Academy, we are now. We are an innovation enterprise institution. And we run diploma courses, national innovation diploma. You can choose Roll of... When you go out to register for your jam, you will see the institutions. You can just choose Roll of Computer as first, fourth choice. You never can tell. You can choose your university. You can choose your polytechnic. Fine. But exhaust all your options. You can choose an IEI as a fourth choice. Doesn't, there's no harm in that. If your university gives you admission, congratulations. If your university doesn't give you admission, God forbid, you will know you have another alternative. It's always good to have alternatives. Okay? Now, let's look at the number one thing, exam tension. I know at a point, at one point or the other, one or every one of us has faced exam tension, right? That fear, you start having butterflies in your stomach when you're about writing an examination. How can you overcome this? Number one, make hay while sunshine. Our literature student, you know what that means, right? Start preparing on time. Some of us wait till last minute. Then we start bombarding ourselves. Reading, I woke up. Morning, night, you don't sleep. Those things can affect you psychologically. If you want to, if you want to pass your examination, you must start preparing on time. Now, when it's almost time for your examination, like this where jam that you want to write now, start reading. In short, don't tell me it's now you want to start reading. You knew you wanted to write jam since last year, right? You should have started preparing. Start reading. So you, you, you read at your own pace. You are, not under, you are not under stress. You are not under tension. Then it's not 30 minutes to your exam. You start reading. Open it as if it's then that you want to load your brain with everything. All major readings by 30 minutes to your exam. You should have stopped reading. Let your brain relax before you enter the examination hall. Now, positivity is very important. That school you want to go for, no matter how big or how huge or how important it looks, you have to believe that you are capable of getting admission into that school. Those people in that school, they are human beings and they don't have two heads. Believe that you can go for that course you want to go for and you will get admission. Then you prepare for it, right? So you have to be positive. Do you understand? You have to stay positive. It helps to prevent unnecessary exam tension. Then recap, revision, doing revision. You have to also pray. Like before we started this program, we prayed and you heard the word of God. The Bible says, by strength shall no mal prevail. Don't trust in your own understanding. Before you read, ask the Holy Spirit to help you to remember, to help you to understand, to help you to read right. Do you know there is reading right? You can read a particular chapter now, and that place will come out. God, the Holy Spirit can direct you on where to read. So always pray. It helps. When you've read, it gives you confidence, and it prevents unnecessary exam tension. Now, how do you answer your jam question? How do you attempt your jam question? Number one, the first thing, some of you, once you see the question like this, oh yeah, you start. You just start answering. No. You need to understand your question very well. Do you understand? Some questions are trickish. And if you don't understand it, you will make mistake. So the first thing is to settle down and understand what they are saying. Don't assume this is what they are saying. Sometimes you need to read a particular question twice. The best thing to do is just, just scan through. 
scan through and you come back and you start answering. Don't, don't be in a hurry to answer questions. Do you understand? You need to understand questions very well. Then another thing that people do, they, they will spend all their time attempting the difficult ones, especially mathematics. They will waste, out of the two hours, they'll use one hour to answer one question. Then they will start rushing. Or English, that's a big mistake. Answer the questions. When you get the question, quickly flash through them to see the ones you can easily answer. You, can, you know number one, you don't know number two, leave number two. Go to number three. Go through all of them and pick the ones you know very well. Do you understand? Hello? Are you listening? These are hacks. These are what? Hacks. These are things that if you know, exam, any exam you are taking becomes very easy for you. Skim through your questions. Take the easy ones, the ones you know. There is no way that you will see out of 200 questions that you don't know anyone, right? The ones you know very well, answer them first before you start attempting the difficult ones. Then, the, in 2017, the number of questions were reduced. And now, your questions will be marked, or everything you are writing will be marked over 400. There is use of English. English is divided into comprehension, passage, registers, interpretation, and oral form. English takes a lot of time. So most times they will advise you not to start with English. Do you understand? Don't start with English because English has a lot of components. It's not advisable to start with English because it takes a lot of time. Begin with your best subject. Begin with your best subject. Begin with your area of strength. Now, there's one, another hack. Don't leave any question unanswered. Can you hear me? Don't leave any question unanswered. When you have attempted the ones you know, then the difficult ones you have already also attempted, then those ones you don't have any idea at all, just tick. Especially when the exam is drawing like maybe 10 minutes to the end of your time. Because your time will be ticking, right? Immediately you start, 35 minutes, your, your time has started. I think it's uh, jam is two hours, right? Your, your time. Don't start with English because you can use that first one hour of your life to start answering English. Go to another one. Answer the simple ones. Then you come back to English. Now, when you have answered and it's almost like maybe 15 minutes to the end of your time, go to all the ones that you left blank and just tick all of them. Tick any here, any here. Some of them will be correct. Now, the thing is, don't leave anyone you leave blank. The, it, now, before now, before now, Jam used to do negative marking. Anyone you fail, they will minus it from the one you get. They don't do that anymore. Anyone you get is what they will give you. So if you don't, if you leave it blank, it may be correct if you try it. So why not just try it anyway? So don't leave any question blank. Ensure you mark everything. Start with the ones you know very well first. Then the ones you have no idea at all. You can use the pattern. Most questions have patterns. Maybe it's A, 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 B, 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 C, C. A, B, C, A, B, C. You know, you can use the, the, the logic of how the pattern of the ones you have answered before to answer the ones you don't know. And most times, you will be correct. Do you understand? So be smart. Look at it. There's always a pattern. Those people setting those questions, I don't know human beings. As you are writing your exam, be very smart. Look at the pattern it's following. Sometimes three C will follow each other in the answer, right? Then maybe the next one will be D. The one you don't know is likely to be the C. Do you understand? So look at the pattern it is following. You have to be very clever. So those ones you don't know, you use the pattern of the ones you know to answer them. Okay? I've said this. Answer everything. Don't leave any question unanswered. Now, there are times that when you read a question, the answer will, it will, you will, you will just 
you will know the answer. But sometimes, when you, are you sure it's this one? Or are you not sure it's this one? Have you seen yourself, you've marked an answer, you went and changed it. Then later you found out that is always follow your instinct. Sometimes your spirit is correct. Especially when you have prayed. Sometimes the spirit of God ministers to you. When the answer, your mind has told you that this is the answer. Especially those of you that like giraffing. You now spied. You now saw that the person ticked something and then you, you erase your own. Trust your spirit. If your spirit tells you, especially the ones you are not sure of, right? Yes. Okay. Now, my, my colleague talked about the quota system and how people get admission in Nigeria. Now, there's still another pattern on how you can get admission or not in Nigeria. Some people, if you score high in jam, scoring very high in jam is not a guarantee that you will get admission, right? If you score very well in jam, you will also write post UTM if you are going for maybe a university, right? Then each university have their cutoff marks. And it also has to do with how competitive the course you are going for is. This is why most people don't get, they will take medicine five years, six years, they don't get admission. And they will tell you they scored very high in JAM. JAM alone does not guarantee admission on a particular course. Courses are more competitive than the other. Do you know? Courses like those very highly professional courses, like law, medicine and surgery, engineering, most of those courses, are, they are very competitive. So some of them, their cutoff marks are high. Have you seen that sometimes when schools re release cutoff marks, all the departments, they don't have same cutoff marks. Do you understand? So if you are going for a course that is very, very competitive, make sure your jam is high and make sure your post-UTM is high because when they divide it, you might fall if your score is not very high. When they divide your post-UTME and your jam, it might fall below. And you now, think, you now start thinking it's one person in your village that is disturbing you. <laughs> so please, these are the things you should pay. You should, the, that's why you should have the syllabus. You should know that department you are going for. Is it very competitive? Do you understand? So it will help you to prepare. Okay. I've explained this. Now, why should you prepare? Now, thank God for ICT. Thank God for the new inno innovations that are coming in. There is this system now. Jam, my school, this uh, CBT. There is a CBT software that you can use to prepare. You know, in those days, if it's before now, you would have been looking for past question. You know? You buy past question from 1999 to 2019. We have past questions everywhere. Yes. Now there is an there is an electronic past question. Since the day Jam began, all their questions till 2019, they have them in one software. You can use it as to rehearse, and it's very cheap. We sell it. How much do we sell it? You know. 1,000 Naira. If you want to have the app, you can have it installed on your phone. You can have it installed on your laptop. We can train you. If you want to be trained on it, it's just 3,000 Naira. Both the installation and the training, everything is 3,000. You will have access to all the app. You know, let me tell you another thing. These people, they still repeat questions. They repeat questions. So, let me tell you what happened to me. When I was in when I was about writing literature that year, I I got this jam brocure. Yeah, this jam brocure that had uh, their literatures. It had questions and answers. I went through the brocure. I don't know if it's brocure. One it's from it's uh, it's from jam anyway. It has the test book, it has questions and it has answers, just like a past question. I studied it so much. Do you know when I entered the hall, I started seeing those questions, most of the questions word for word. Because most of these people, sometimes they just assume students don't read. And it's true. 
Sometimes they will give you very simple things, but because you have not studied, it will look so technical to you. Most of these things are very easy. But you need rehearsal. From now, if every day you go through maybe one year, every day you go through one year, every day you go through one year, there's no way on the day of the exam that you will not see some questions that will be repeated. So, it helps you to figure out some of those popular topics. You will see that this particular topic, they always set it to. You go and study it, right? So, it's good to study some of these things. It helps you to be familiar with your pattern of asking questions. I will advise every one of you to get that, C that CBT software. It's also like mock exam. You can practice and you can write jam exam on it. There's an option to practice. There's an option to write jam exam. You will see yourself like this, writing, write, you'll be writing jam exam in your, in your room and the time will be counting. It will show you your score. It's so nice. Okay? I don't want to waste too much time. Now, there are some, pe there are some persons that may not get admission this year, even though their results are high. If you have a very high jam score, you may, gain, you may fail to gain admission because like I explained to you before, only jam score cannot guarantee you admission. There are some other things to consider, like the competitiveness of the course you are going for, the cutoff mark of that particular course. So you must perform very well in both your jam, UTME, and the post UTME. Then catchment area and all that, all those other criteria are also to be put into consideration. That is why you should not put all your eggs in one basket. If it is not unilag, I'm not going to school. It's good to have other options. That's what I'm telling you. It's good to have other options. Like this diploma course we are doing here now. If you do it for two years, you can get direct entry into the university. At every stage in your life, just make sure you are moving. Don't be stagnant. If you are saying, if, I, if this school does not give me admission, I'm not good. It means you are that year of your life, you are stagnant. You didn't make progress. And make sure, no matter how small the progress is, make sure you are making progress in life. Do you understand? So if you think your exam score is very high, you might still not get admission. Then if you think your jam score is very low and you allow that to kill your spirit, don't allow your low jam score to kill your spirit. You can see now that there are all, some other factors involved. Do you understand? There are some courses in the university that people don't know. Have you heard about forestry before? Animal house boundary. Horticulture. Animal husbandry, fishery. So there are some other courses in the university that people go for. Those courses are not very competitive, right? So people who they are, you will be surprised that somebody who you scored better than has get, gone gone to school. You don't know what the person is studying, right? All we know is that the person has gotten admission. But don't go to school and be frustrated, anyways. Don't go and do a course that you don't have any clue about or you don't have passion for just because you want to go to school. Okay? Now, those oversabies, those that think they know it all, they might not get admission. Always ask questions. Information is power. Like you come for this kind of event. Now, some persons are writing. Others are not writing. Because they think they already know. They're already failing jam already. God forbid. But no, truth be told, information is power. Like you took your time. Now, this Saturday, now you could be somewhere enjoying yourself. And you came here to learn. You are equipping yourself, right? You already have an advantage. All the information you will get today, you already have an advantage over your mates that doesn't know these things, right? So, all through this stage, before you get admission, even when you get admission into the university, always ask questions so people don't take advantage of you. Do you understand? Always ask questions. Check websites. If you are going to a school, go, always check the school websites. Check JAM websites. Because it's not every information that you will get that is correct. Do you understand? So, now, those
just won't listen to everything like I said. It's not every informed. Sometimes your friends, when you listen to your peers, they will mislead you. Like I said, know where to go for information and know who to ask. Those who believe that connection will settle everything. So if you think that your father's friends, brother's sister, and you refuse to read because you believe somebody will help you, you might not get, don't be desperate for admission. I don't have time. I would have shared the story of my roommate that we stayed together for four years. It was in the fourth year that she actually got real admission. She got fake admission. Don't be, and the full family, they already believed that she was in her final year. That was when she got admission and she was in 100 level. So please, don't fall a victim. There are people out there that are waiting to prey on you. Don't be a victim, please. Be wise, be sharp. You are not more in secondary school as far as I'm concerned. No. You are not in higher institution. Let your eyes be very strong. Don't allow anybody to take advantage of you. Don't go and pay unnecessarily. Say They said they will help you pay. Don't pay. Before you release your money, know where your money is going to. Okay? Now, there are some mistakes that can lead, that can also lead to you not getting admission. Now, your O level result combination. You must know those subjects that you need to pass to get a particular course. Sometimes, when they even admitted you, you will still do screening in the school and they can screen you out. So, please, you should get their every school, uh, their broke you to know the subject combinations that you need in the particular course you are going for. Then age, like we have already said, if by October, November you are not 16, there's no way you can get admission. Cut off mark, we have talked about that before. First state of origin claim, because you want to gain admission into Unilag, you now go and do local government of origin for Lagos. If they catch you, your admission will be falsified. It will be cancelled, right? So please make sure all the information you are giving are correct. Cut off mark for universities is 140. College of Education, 120, 100. Then IEIs, 90 and above. Do you understand? So please, you have to take advantage of all this. Choose first, second, third, and fourth choice. Don't leave any choice blank. You can make your first choice university. Your second choice, make sure you use it. Use a, your third choice. So that in case one does not give you, you can fall back to the other one. Okay? Now, five things you must avoid. Please, I've said this before. Don't, if, don't, take, don't waste too much time in doing your jam registration. You've gotten all the procedures on Monday. Make sure you start. Don't wait until last minute before preparing. Choosing not to study with past question is a big mistake. Make sure you use the CBT or whatever past question you can lay your hands on. Don't depend on only jam past questions. Make sure you also read your textbooks. Read your notebooks, okay? Then, don't put your trust in Expo. I showed you your cubicle, right? Don't feel any, don't rely on any external force. If somebody tells you to pay 10,000 and that he will come that day and assist you, it's a lie, yo. There's no way anybody can assist you. No assistance is coming from anywhere. Once you enter the examination hall, you are on your own. Don't allow anybody to use you. I know people will pay. Some people in this hall, they will still pay. Say, don't worry. I will come that day. It's my, I know the person in charge of the CBT center. I will bring, I will send, just hold your phone. I will send you the answers. <laughs> you will not even be allowed to take your phone into the hall. So please don't allow anybody to deceive you. Okay? To prepare adequately. No. The average score you need for the course you are going for, you have to know those things. Create a study pattern now. Then start 
reading, go through at least 10 recent years. So 10 years from 2020 is what? 2010. At least from 2010 to 2020, go through all their past questions. They are likely to be repetitions. Then use exam focus textbooks. Some books are recommended by JAM, right? Read those books. If you are writing WAEC, those books recommended by WAEC, read those books. Then I've told you before, read those past questions. Practice, 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 practice. Mentally write the exam in your head. With this CBT, you could have taken the exam 20 times before the exam will come. You can take the JAM exam every day if you have the CBT software. You write it, you fail. You write it, you fail. You write it, you fail. As you are writing, your performance will improve before you go for the final exam. My time is up. Study past questions and all that. I've told you, I've explained all this before. Then, you must know how to use the syllabus, right? You don't have enough time. Don't think there's no time. Lack of computer literacy skill. I've told you that. After this seminar, if you are not computer literate, just come to our front desk and register. You cannot go and write a computer-based examination if you are not computer literate. How is that possible? Is it magic? You don't know how to handle mouse, and you want to write an exam with mouse. So please, you must be computer literate. Don't look for miracle. There is definitely no miracle center in jam. So don't pay, don't pay for somebody to help you. Don't pay somebody to go and write the exam for you. Thank God you are doing a biometric verification. So that all these things, there are, are some things you cannot even do. Don't be scared. The exam tension, we've talked about it before. Now you can combine WIAC and ECHO and NAPTEB. You can combine results. But it depends on the school, right? I know some schools now, they don't even take two sittings again, right? Some school is just one sitting. But yes, you can combine results. Okay? Now, how many questions we jam set? Use of English is 60. Then the others are 40 questions each, making it 100. English takes more questions. English takes more questions, right? You can apply for the same course in different institutions. You can, in conclusion, you can gain admission, believe it. You can gain admission into any institution of your choice. But don't only have one option. You just choose first choice and you leave the other options like that. Make sure you take advantage of all the options. First choice to fourth choice. Then please, be wise be wise as you are going out from the process you might you even see some dubious people around the cbt center hello you want to register don't allow anybody hustle you shine your eye thank you i want to emphasize our three things for jam score is not enough for you to get admission for people that are having medicine in heart to go and read, less than 10% of people that choose medicine always get admission because of the spaces. In the last jam, over 550,000 candidates chose medicine as first choice. And the spaces that are available are less than 50,000 for medicine and medicine in their courses. So it is always very, very competitive. Have it in mind that the course you are choosing, you may not get it for so many reasons. One, because of the score. Score in JAM is 50% of the overall score for admission in universities. Your WIEC or NECWE exam carries a weight. Some universities attach 20% to it or, 10 or, or 30%. Then, UTM is test, 30 or 20, depends. 
So Jam makes sure that if the investors are going to admit you, on the total score, before they put in their this into scabs, Jam score must carry a weight of 50%. So if they are, if they are using 100% for their own score, what is why you score the Jam should be based on 50% of the criteria. Then your performance in your school certificates. Some of the schools grade it. If you have one, they give it as six points. If you have two, five points. So they will add the five credits together and give you a score. If you scored one, 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 one in five, this that is 30. So 30 plus whatever you scored in jump. But if you scored, it will be very low max. Maybe you get about maybe 10. So they will add that one. Then your post UTMA, they will add it. Before they will now find out how many did you score. Then they will start arranging it in the order of who scored the highest to start noting where merit is top, uh, state of origin or uh, a cash paid area will come in, uh, educationally disadvantaged area will come in and so on and so forth. So that is most of the reasons why many people don't get admission. So it is not enough for you to score high in, in JAMP. Your school certificates result counts. Your post-UTM also counts. So she is saying that you should get this software. We, we have it here. We are registered with uh, one of the people that are offering the, the software. The software can be used to prepare for JAMP, prepare for WIAC, and prepare for NECO, and even NAPTAB, NAPTAB. So if you want to get it, you can come at any time we also train you on how to use the software. So the software gives an advantage on how to use the computer and how, how to also use the computer test to prepare for the exam. Then the last thing she talked about there, which I want to emphasize is that you should please try as much as possible not to fall into wrong hands. You have to start preparing. There's no two way to it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Please, don't waste your opportunity of coming here. When you are going to register, ensure that you pick us as a choice. It could be fourth choice, we don't really care. But if you make us first choice, better for us. But if you go to register, you have four choices. Make use of all the choices so that when one does not give admission, you can always change. If you didn't pick the school, you cannot go and start changing. You can change from second choice to first choice. You can change from fourth choice to first choice. But if you did not pick any school among those choices, you cannot go and change. Okay. All right. So I want to call some recharge card. I don't know what network is this. So. Are you not tired again? This is a Tisalat. Who has a tea salad? Okay, wait, let me call. Etel, let me call Etel. Etel. Okay, it is, uh, okay, I will call it a salad. I have a tea salad line. Somebody should help me. <laughs> okay. Etel, do you know the code? What's the code? Okay, star one, two, six, star. Star one, two, six, star. Five zero zero five one five two three five one five six.